The bedroom hasn't changed since they left. Stuffed animals on the bed, their clothes in the closet. Their grandmother won't change it. She says it still smells like them. Ansila and Nusila, ages eight and seven, left their home in Kazakhstan to go to China with their mother, Adiba, in 2017. Adiba grew up in China, so she went back for a short visit to see some family and take a few classes in Xinjiang in northwest China. Her husband, Yestin, and young son, Nurmakan, stayed home. But shortly after they arrived, Adiba and her daughters disappeared because they went back at the wrong time. Xinjiang is the region where the U.S. says China has put up to two million people, nearly all Muslims, in detention camps over the last few years. Activists say Beijing has done that to try to eliminate Islam within its borders. And ex-detainees have told CNN they were tortured inside while undergoing political indoctrination. Adiba and her family are Muslim. Her husband Yestin says a relative told him his wife was put in such a camp while his daughters were sent to live with distant relatives. He hasn't heard from any of them in nearly two years. When he sees young women in the neighborhood, he calls them mama, Yestin says. He doesn't even know what his own mother looks like. China says these camps aren't prisons, but voluntary vocational training centers that are being used to not eliminate Islam generally, only Islamic extremism that the government has linked to past terror attacks in the region. So authorities play propaganda videos like this one on state-run TV to show happy Muslims cheerfully learning. They interview some who have supposedly been, quote, reformed, steered away from a life of terrorism. But even if that's true, Yestin says that still does not explain why his wife was locked up. My wife is not a terrorist, he says. She has nothing to do with it. I can't express with words how much pain I feel when I think of her there. We asked Chinese authorities what happened to Adiba. They did not reply to our question. So we went to Xinjiang ourselves, to some of the most remote parts of China, traveling thousands of miles in all. We went to six places, both to see what is happening here and in one town to try and find Adiba. Ethnic Muslim minorities have lived here for centuries, Uyghurs, Kazakhs, and others, culturally distinct from the Han Chinese who dominate the rest of the country. But now, every day, they're forced to prove that they're not a threat to the state. Cameras watch their every move, in some places positioned every 50 meters. While Han Chinese regularly breeze through the myriad police roadblocks, anyone we saw who appeared to be a minority got stopped. Racial profiling appears rampant. But all that is likely still better than life for those that end up in places like this. Detention camps designed for Muslim ethnic minorities, like this one outside the city of Kashgar. What China calls a job training site to us looked a lot more like a prison. High walls, barbed wire, guard towers, things multiple experts told CNN are telltale signs of detention centers. Images like this are rare. Few people have seen camps like this up close because China's government tries to prevent reporters like us from seeing them. A police officer soon reminded us of that fact. What's happening here is that this, th this police officer does not want us to film, but what we believe is that that's a camp right there. This is as close as we've been able to get. And right over there, we believe are family members, presumably, who could have family members inside that camp, and they're waiting to to see them. China says it has nothing to hide here, but not only do they obstruct attempts to film or go inside the camps, they also prevent us from speaking to those who know anything about them. We tried to talk to this man who just brought food to his brother, who he says is being held in the camp, but before we could ask about life inside, plainclothes security surrounded us and told the man to be quiet. There are camps like these all across Xinjiang, nearly 1,000 miles away, we took a train to the city of Turpan to see another. Same type of prison-like walls, same kind of secrecy, and the minute after we arrive, same kind of police harassment. Ma'am, can you tell me what that is? Is this something that you don't want us to see? Why you are here? You tell me, why you are here? Why, we're, we're, why, why you are here? We're here to film what we believe is a camp for Uyghurs and for Kazakhs and for Kyrgyz and for all ethnic Who Muslim minorities. That? Who told you that? We, she threatened to arrest us and demanded we delete our footage, so we had to leave. Our last stop is the town of Troli, where Adiba's family says she was detained. 
Her husband, Yeston, believes she has since been let out of the camp and is back living with her daughters. But Yeston was told they can't leave China because officials took away Adiba's passport. He has no way to contact her and fears he could end up in a camp himself if he went to find her. So we tried to find Adiba ourselves. But as soon as we arrive in town, traffic police block our way, and officials who'd been following us insist on a group dinner. We decline strongly, saying no, no, no. But in the end, we've got no choice. As Muslim minorities languish in camps not far away, government officials drink liquor and dance to folk music. It is an absurd scene, but we can't leave. And so we were unable to find Adiba, and we couldn't deliver this message, what Yestin wanted us to share if we found her. Quote, our son and I have been waiting and will always wait for you. You are the love of my life. Matt Rivers, CNN, Xinjiang, China.